gets uh, some interesting thoughts uh, from a few people that I like and enjoy uh, about uh, uh, one Mr. Bernard, Mr. Bernard Sanders. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure at this point a lot of people have heard uh, the clip that was that got viral about Bernie saying I'm dealing with the fucking global crisis and everybody free and a bunch of people were just like how could he this is ridiculous that kind of smut language this is America okay we we don't use that kind of language in America the land of the free you're you, you don't get to say words like that uh but the town police comes out and, you know, basically yells at him uh, for, 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 and, and really the journalists were asking him, like, when he's going to suspend his campaign, right? And it's like, the, the, the dude's dealing with a lot, and you're just like, hey, when are you going to quit? Like, because we're, we're actively trying to rig this thing, and you are just super getting in the way. So, like, when are you going to be done with it? <laughs> And he was like, I'm dealing with a fucking global crisis. And, and it's funny because it's this media treatment of Bernie Sanders is, is such a 180 because, uh, because, you know, Biden was called, uh, you know, his best moment was calling a union leader a horse's ass. And everybody was like, this guy, he's the best. Now that's how you're going to beat Trump. You know, the representation of people. <laughs> You, you call that guy a horse's ass. Now you are a winning candidate. What an electable guy that guy is. Uh, and, and really, when you look at that, it's just uh, what, what you're seeing is the establishment saying, don't challenge us. Don't challenge us. The union leader challenges the establishment status quo by going up against Ber by Joe Biden. Uh, Bernie Sanders is also pushing back against, you know, establishment, the way the establishment does things. And uh, and and they're they're like, hey, don't challenge us. Stop challenging us, you know. And if you go to Bernie's website, I talked about this on um, Taboo Table Talk last week. Is if you if, if he has a point by point way um, of how you deal with it, right? How you kind of handle the economic crisis, how you handle the the uh, public health crisis that's being caused by by all of this. This, this negative situation that we're in, um, you know, how do you maintain the economy going forward, uh, what you need to put into place. And really, these are all large structural changes that what we should be doing is, is trying to hold on to so that we have something in place for the future. That's really what this point-by-point -point plan is, right? And what Bernie is doing um, and, he, you know, he, he said that he would be the organizer in chief. That's that's it. That would be his primary thing. Um, Bernie is negotiating for the American worker because right now we are not at the negotiating table. Right. With, with these representatives that don't really represent us, they represent corporations based on how they've been, you know, uh, dealing with um, dealing with this crisis, bailing out corporate interests over the American people yet again. Um, Bernie's bringing us uh, onto the negotiating table, which, again, is scary to the establishment, right? Um, so Crystal Ball has an interesting interesting idea. I like Crystal. She has a show called Rising. Um, if you guys uh, ha aren't watching that, you should. They're, it's very good. Her and Sagar and Jetty, uh, very good. And he basically, Crystal basically says that now would be the time that Bernie dropped out uh, to go help, to go be a voice of reason, to bring the worker to the negotiating table on behalf, uh, you know, it, to, and, and lead the Democrats in that direction, right? He should be, he should be spearheading how the Democrats should be handling um, everything with COVID-19. Um, you know, and if this thing succeeds the way that he has proposed it, uh, then what we end up getting are durable government programs that can last for a long time, you know, how, it, because now you can see exactly how a public, a full out public health care system would work, how UBI could be implemented and what people would do with it. Um, 
and, uh, uh, you know, how, how that can be a force for public good. Um, and some of the stuff that he, uh, I'll, I'll kind of go over that here. Um, and I, and again, there's a, I did talk about this in the last Taboo Table Talk, but it's like $2,000 a month for every American adult citizen, you know, paid time off, moratorium on debt, stuff like that is what he's talking about. These are all large systemic structural changes that need to be made in order not just to get through this crisis, but to have in place so we never wind up in a crisis like this again. Um, because the Democratic Party does not have any leadership. Uh, you have Pelosi and Schumer talking about tax credits and ex in expanding unemployment, um, you know, and giving out small business loans. And these are all they're not even stopgap measures. They're, they're just, they're, they're like, a, uh, like, they're like, if you scrape your knee, it, it's not even a bandaid. It's, it's basically taking a bunch of like rubbing some dirt into it and then putting duct tape on top of that. That's what Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are offering with these loans and expansion of social security or expansion of unemployment you know, it's like, oh, th yeah, let's stress that system out a whole lot more. That, that seems to be the right thing to do. And here's the thing. I got to I got to put this out there. Joe Biden is not missing. OK, he's not missing. Joe Biden is very safe uh, a, within the DNC headquarters, the approved DNC headquarters. And uh, his CPU is just getting an upgrade. That's all, you know, there's, we've clearly seen that that computer system is uh, not going well. Um, it's falling apart. So, uh, you know, Joe is, Joe is in repair. And what they're doing is that they're taking some of the, uh, uh, the compliance components from Mayor Pete and putting it into uh, Joe Biden's brain, you know, because they, they have to do an upgrade. This is, this is, this is going to be Joey B 3.0. Uh, Joey B 2.0 was uh, uh, when he was VP for, for Barack Obama, and they had to do some major upgrades so that he would be um, cool with the black president, you know, being that he likes to uh, make deals with segregationists. Uh, so it was like a real big upgrade that they did on him. So now they're doing another one, so, and fortunately they have another uh, unit that they can borrow parts from. So... I mean, very cost effective. It's just cost effective and smart. But, <laughs> but here's the, here's the way that, that, that people kind of deal with with Bernie versus Biden kind of thing, and, and it's uh, you know the way that Rachel Maddow talked about it last week with all the primaries that happened last week, and uh, she kept saying Biden has a large lead and he's the de facto winner of uh of of the uh the the democratic primary which no he's not uh, bernie's not trailing him that bad right like if this was like 500 to 100 or something like that i would be like okay that's a large lead but i think bernie's trailing him by like 100 delegates or something along those lines it's not as large of a a fucking lead as they like to make it out to be you know and she says that with Bernie staying in the race, it's it's actually creating a danger for the primaries. It's it's creating a problem for the primaries um, because now people have to go and vote. They have to actually, like, take part in a democracy. And that's not what, you, you know, like, this would be over if Bernie just dropped out. So why wouldn't Bernie just drop out? And uh, And it's like, wait a minute. So you're saying the problem with all of this voting stuff, all these people going out and, and voting in the primaries when they probably should be staying at home and limiting how much exposure they have uh, out, you know, in, in large public spaces and stuff is because Bernie's still on the ballot. And not like you don't think the DNC could just like delay the primaries all the way through, like kind of like. Here's the thing. Performers can be some of the most self-involved people ever, right? Like, I get it. But even us, as self-involved and self-obsessed as we can get to, we're like, we have to cancel a bunch of these shows for the benefit of the public. And the DNC couldn't be, do the same thing of just like, we have to delay democracy just a little bit so that this whole pandemic shit can be done. And I don't even know why 
you know, like this would not be a problem if if everybody just voted for the primary on the same day. That'd be that'd be cool. I'd be into that, <laughs> you know. Uh why not just have one one primary day? One day for the whole country to take part in the primaries, just like we do with with voting. Or two days, right? It could be like a Tuesday, Wednesday kind of partnership situation. Uh, that seems cool. March 28th could have been the day, you know? Like, find, a, find an average of, of when all this shit starts. And it, and it won't be this insanity that goes on uh, for, for months af- month after month after month. But it is ridiculous to say that the reason why these primaries need to keep going is because Bernie Sanders is in and and the DNC. It's not like the DNC hasn't been making up rules this entire time. Like they said that they weren't going to change the rules, gave us a transparent, you know, set of rules that that and and things, criteria that people had to meet. And then they changed it every single time, every single time that there was a candidate or Bernie or Gravel or Tulsi Gabbard or somebody was doing well, they were like, well, we better change the rules. And it's funny, like, so she, Rachel Maddow makes a statement, but completely ignores the fact that last week, fucking Joe Biden was telling people that he needed to go vote. And now Bernie didn't outright come out and was like, hey, chill out, stay at home, you know, be with your, be with your friends and family or whatever, but he 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 was like it's a personal choice like i wish he would have just been like stay at home but um you know biden biden's thing was pretty clear of like if you're if you're not sick and if you're not seeing the symptoms fucking go vote get out there go do your thing it's like no stay at home like rand paul was asymptomatic and tested positive it's like yeah so in a global pandemic you told people to go and be around other people when it's like, hey, limited contact, social distancing, that's what we need to do. Uh, And then two days later, he changes his tune. Two days later, he's like, don't, don't, don't do it, guys. Stay at home. You can be asymptomatic. It's scary out there. It's scary out there. No, the Democratic primary should just be delayed. And all of them should happen all at once, I think. Right. And then like we take like a week and a half uh, to count, to verify, uh, we publicly verify it and make sure that there is enough transparency in this situation um, that the election can't be stolen. And we be patient and we take our time with things. Uh, We might be a mentally stable, like a far more mentally stable country. (laughs) Uh. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be making daily videos, so make sure you come back to this channel. Make sure that you are subscribed. You hit that bell so you're getting the notifications uh, because we are going to be putting up videos every single day, uh, keeping you guys updated on what's going on around the world, keeping our critical thinking skills Uh, up to date as well, uh, talking about some interesting ideas, talking about some topics that you won't hear on your corporate mainstream outlets. Uh, I'm also a touring stand-up comedian, uh, but uh, at the moment, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to tell you guys about. So uh, if you have the means to and would like to, to, to donate to this channel, to donate to Um, creating videos to improve the quality and quantity of these videos feel free by uh, by going to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate that's r-a-m-a-n noodlescomedy.com slash donate there you will find various different ways that you can either become a sustaining member uh, via those big orange buttons patreon bandcamp and even paypal uh, or by just making a one-time donation Uh, via the aforementioned PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, uh, whatever you feel most comfortable doing. And that's if you have the means to do it. I understand that we're all struggling through this time. Uh, So all of these videos are going to be available for free. And like I said, will be up every single day. And a huge way that you can help uh, is by sharing these out. Uh, Hit it, hit it up on your social feeds, on, on on the Twitters and the 
and the alternative social feeds and the Instagrams and the Facebooks. Just share it around. Tell it. Tell as many people as you possibly can, uh, especially if you enjoy um, the topics that we are discussing on this channel. And once again, make sure that you are subscribed. You hit that like button um, and get uh, get new eyes on this channel. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I, I, and everybody that's already become a sustaining member or a patron um, or has donated, um, thank you so much. It really, really means a lot, and it helps. Every little tiny bit helps in uh, in in in, the, in this time of of need. So uh, be good to each other, stay safe out there, and we'll see you tomorrow with new videos.